simultaneous hydrogen of thiamine and hydrogen nitrogenation of pyridine. Our talker is Edgar Montezuma of the Universidad de San Luis Potosi in Mexico, co-authors of Umic, Oscam, and Chuangayo Yi from, from Ohio State University. Okay, well, the introduction said, my name is Edgar Montezuma, I come from Mexico. Uh, the thing is, I'm coming from Mexico and I did some work at Ohio State because I was a graduate student there. One of the research that I did at Ohio State was about nickel molybdenum or gamma alumina catalyst for simultaneous hydrogen including in the ACN of the PDD. Uh, since that this topic is quite studied, uh, we have to look for some openings in the research area. <laughs> We started to look in the alumina catalyst. For, from this slide, the only thing that I want to point out is about the reactions. I use the modern compounds, thiophene, and use hydrogen to produce the C4 hydrocarbon and some looking at the, the H2S. And also, I look on the pyridine uh, reaction with hydrogen to produce the pentanes and the, the ammonia. Um, what I did for the research was looking at the supported catalyst and the supported catalyst. This time I'm going to talk about the supported catalyst on the alumina uh, based catalyst. What are the steps on the research? We produced the catalyst by wet impregnation of the alumina. We did some characterization of the oxidic phase. Uh, did, we did the reaction experiment. Thiophene ATN, pyridine ATN, and simultaneous ATS ATN. And the last part that I want to point out in this talk is about the temperature program resorption and the temperature program reduction of the catalyst. Uh, the catalyst preparation, just to point out again, is the simultaneous impregnation of the alumina with the ammonium nectamolybdate and nickel nitrate. Uh, we dry at 60 degrees uh, on the vacuum and we can sign at 500 degrees for four hours uh, to produce the oxidic phase. After that, we sulfided in situ in the reactor for 10 hours with a mixture of hydrogen and hydrogen sulfide for hundred The catalyst characterization, we use three different techniques. The VT surface area, the X-ray diffraction, and the laser Raman spectroscopy. From the VT uh, surface area, we can conclude quite easily that the surface area is a function of the metal body of the catalyst. From the X-ray diffraction, uh, it's very difficult to find any characterization for X-ray diffraction. Why? Because we have pretty high fluorescence in the uh, in this type of catalyst. The most useful tool was the laser Raman spectroscopy. And I found basically I have three different catalysts at this point. It's 20 percent of metal. Uh, the metal oxide, in this case molybdenum oxide, 15% molybdenum oxide, and 10% of the molybdenum trioxide. What I found, basically, I found the lowest metal I am having a, a molybdenum ethanol, molybdates, and as I increase the concentration, I start forming the molybdenum trioxide. After I form the monolayer with high concentration of the metal, I have to find the signal for the molybdenum trioxide. This is for the monometallic catalyst. For the bimetallic catalyst, I only found the molybdenum phase, even a low concentration of the uh, both metal. What that means is that I have a combination of the nickel and the molybdenum in the nickel molybdate or uh, polymolybdate. In the reaction experiment, the first set of experiments that I start looking at was the ATS of thiophene. Uh, the temperature of the reaction was 400 degrees C, pressure 1 atmosphere, and the flow rates were 86.28 cc per minute and with the composition of 2% of thiophene. And the catalyst that I was looking was one meter of total surface area in the reactor. The reactor that I used was a 
fixed bed micro reactor. Uh, the, the experiments that I run, I found that the nickel doesn't have any activity for hydrosulfurization. After that, we run the molybdenum uh, catalyst, and we found that this quite active for hydrosulfurization. The only two, uh, the main difference here is that the reaction activity increases with the metal loading. And the other part that is pretty well reported is that the promotional effect when we combine the nickel and the molybdenum trioxide. Uh, this part has been studied quite a bit. And the only thing that we found is the big range when the promotional effect takes place. Here's the 315, 515 indicate the relationship between the nickel and the molybdenum in the catalyst. Okay, uh, to be sure in this thing about thiophene hydrosulfurization, I mentioned before that the nickel catalysts have very low thiophene ACA, ACS activity and increases with metal loading. We are talking about 1 or 2 percent activity. And the thiophene is not only converted to simple hydrocarbon, but the major part is converted to combustion products, CO2 and CO. The molybdenum catalysts were more active than nickel catalysts, and the molybdenum catalysts are highly selective for the production of simple hydrocarbon. The combustion products are not disappear. And about the thiophene hydrosulfurization, the activity increased when we mix nickel and molybdenum on the alumina support. The optimal composition needs just to be about 7 and 15 percent molybdenum and trioxide. Uh, industrial has to go a little bit lower. In the reaction experiments about hydrogen nitrogenation of heating, I look at temperature at 400 degrees, the pressure was 100 psig, the flow rate was 70 cc per minute for hydrogen, but in this case the bed composition was only 0.9 percent of heating and the catalyst were 0.3 grams. And the results of this experiment shows that the hydraulic nitrogenation of pyridine over molybdenum trioxide mm -hmm. that become alumina catalyst. Uh, but I found a big trouble in this uh, experiment, the thermodynamic equilibrium. And the experiment <coughs> that I was looking at 100 PSIG, I had thermodynamic limitation in the range of 320, 360. After 400 degrees, it was totally problem with the thermodynamic equilibrium. What I can get from that information, I can get information that the conversion of the PDD is a function, is a very strong function of the metal loading in the catalyst. Uh, if I could move around the thermodynamic equilibrium, I'm not going to get uh, some big deal of information. I just have to look on the low side or even in the higher side of the, of the temperature. And regarding the piperidine production, at 320 I have to have very high production of piperidine because I'm on the left side of the equilibrium curve. After 360 I have to either convert it to C5 or I have to convert it to combustion products. The thing to look here is that the C5 production is a strong function of the metal loading. If I look in the nickel catalyst, I can find that the C5 yields in this case are around 10% in the nickel goes to 1 or 2 percent, almost no activity. And the piperidine production also was very low. If I move to the Hydrogen nitrogenation of pyridine over molybdenum and nickel oxide alumina catalyst. And looking at the effect of molybdenum uh, loading, I have to look at the overall conversion. Everything is almost at the same uh, level on the 320. But at the 400 degrees and the 360, I can see the still the effect of the metal loading, indicating that it has uh, the active site depend on the molybdenum metal. And what about the pyridine conversion? But I still have no trends on the low side of the pyperidine uh, or the low side of the temperature. On the C5 hydrocarbon yield, that 
this plot will clearly indicate that the smaller denon is the active state for the for the hydrogen hydrogenation reaction. And if I look through the nickel effect of this car, I can see almost no effect on the overall conversion if I change the uh, nickel metal on the surface of the car. So regarding the C5 skills, but I can I still cannot see any difference. And it's clearly indicated that uh, so the molecular on is the active space for hydro denitrogenation. I also moved to simultaneous hydro sulfurization and hydro denitrogenation. In this case, the temperature was 400 degrees and the pressure was 100 psi. The flow rate was 71.2 cc per minute. In this case, I have different composition of pyridine and different composition of thiophene. I have 0.8 and 0.8. I made it because of was preparing the feed by injection through above the it was the, some kind of equilibrium the vapor phase and liquid phase equilibrium. The catalyst was 0.3 grams for the for the monometallic indicating molybdenum or nickel catalyst and 0.2 grams from for the bromore catalyst. The, the results now change uh, quite a bit. Uh, the thiophene conversion increases pretty drastically than the other experiment, basically because I'm comparing reaction at one PSIE at 14.7 at atmospheric pressure and 100 uh, PSIE. In this case, it's again clear that the molybdenum is, the, in, is the quite active for the reaction because we're increasing the concentration we have increased the conversion. In this case, the pyridine conversion is lower at 320 and, uh, than 360 and a little bit lower than 400. Something should be happening here regarding the thermodynamic equilibrium. Something is uh, pulling the thermodynamic equilibrium to the production of the pyridine and finally to the C5 hydrocarbon. Uh, the simultaneous hydrodesulfurization of thiophene and over the simultaneous ATS, ATN over the molybdenum and nickel of alumina. And I'm looking on the effect of molybdenum loading, and I have again the 320, 360, and 400 on the thiophene, uh, on the thiophene conversion. But I still can not see many differences at 400 because I'm having high concentration of the metal on the surface. Uh, at 360, uh, we have not enough energy for the reaction. And regarding the pyridine conversion, that's the important part to look about this reaction experiment. In this case, we are looking for a maximum at 360, uh, compared with 320 and 400. In this case, at 360, we think that the hydrogen sulfide for the any of the sulfur compounds is playing an important role on the ACN reaction rather than just the in metal. Or, and the conclusions about this part is that it's been in hydrogen nitrogenation. Uh, all the reaction experiments show the, that, the, that nickel catalysts are not very active for treating and the molybdenum catalysts are more active for hydrogen nitrogenation. And in the, regarding the nickel molybdenum catalyst, uh, we have a big promotional effect uh, on the ATS, but we don't have any promotional effect on the ATS reaction, indicating that only the molybdenum active sites are involved, involved on the ATS reaction. Uh, regarding the products of the reaction, the piperidine was not found in the uh, product screen, suggesting that the hydrogen sulfide somehow increases the activity or the pyperidine hydrogenolysis. And in this case, I think ATN active sites are regenerated during the hydrodesulfurization reaction. I made a mistake here, it should be ATS. And just to be on the track of the catalyst composition that resulted on the, most, the highest activity was 
3 to 5 percent of nickel oxide and 15 percent of polyvalent oxide. And at this point, I'm moving to something that uh, something new about the characterization of the sulfide phase. In this case, I'm looking for the temperature program desorption for TPD. In this case, I use the same reactor, but I put it the chromatograph, the GC directly online, uh, all the time passing through the GC column. And a small amount of catalyst is placed in the reactor and is heated in the furnace with a temperature program. In this case, I use helium as a linear gas and after sulfide the reaction, after sulfide the catalyst, I submit it to a linear temperature program and the amount of absorbing gas, in this case hydrogen sulfide, uh, was monitored to a GC as a function of time. And in the temperature program reduction, I change the pure helium to the helium hydrogen and measure the production of hydrogen sulfide. This kind of form for the three catalysts that I use for this frame. I use alumina, nickel oxide and alumina, molybdenum oxide and alumina, and the bimetallic catalyst. The important feature of this figure is that there is a low temperature desorption for uh, in each of the catalysts, and it seems to be the same for each of the catalysts. But the second part of the desorption curve appears at a different point, indicating that there is a characteristic point of the desorption curve depending on the metal that I have on the surface. And the other thing to look here is that the curve D doesn't resemble, it's not a combi simple combination of these two lines, but this is a, also a, a different uh, position and a different amount of hydrogen sulfide that is coming out of the catalyst. After uh, the resorption, I supplied hydrogen to look to the TPR reduction of the TPR experiment and the same catalyst. I have no reduction at the low temperature for the alumina and the one that was a little bit easier to reduce a low temperature was nickel and the observation here is that the uh, the second core, the second peak of the core also indicates a different position of the reduction peak and or indicates a characteristic reduction peak for each of the catalysts. Uh, it was supposed to be the core. Uh, the temperature program desorption plus, I also tried and tried many times until I got some kind of nice result about the thiopin the source after the experiment, meaning that I prepared the catalyst, I sulfide the catalyst, I did the ACS experiment, and after that I looked through the resorption of the thiopine. And clear, uh, the thing that I found it was that the thiopine resorbs a very low temperature, around 100, and some of the catalysts absorb more thiopine than the other catalysts. In this case, the one that absorbed more thiopine was the one that is bimetallic. This curve is just short here because the peak was very high, and I, if we integrate the area under the curve, we found that absorbed more thiopine. And what happened if I start reducing the catalyst after the TPD of thiopine? Uh, but they are very difficult to reduce, but the they start to reduce a different temperature uh, because of the metal that I have in the surface. Everything starts uh, reducing about 550 to 600 degrees. Uh, what are the conclusions of this uh, study about TPR? Uh, the thiopine is strongly absorbed on the car, mainly because of the absorption of the alumina. The low temperature peak at is hydrogen sulfide that is absorbed in the physical form. Uh, the low temperature peak for the nickel moly, the bimetallic catalyst, is more wide than the peak for the monometallic catalyst. Hydrogen is also absorbed on the surface of the catalyst. And what about the conclusions of the 
the catalyst were more difficult to reduce after ADF reaction indicated that the sulfur was already reduced. And the TPB of pyridine and TPR after pyridine, pyridine was dissolved at higher temperature than thiamine. This is because of the behavior of the alumina and the pyridine acid basic absorption. The pyridine is dissolved very slow after the first TPDT, again because of the acid basic uh, function of the, of the catalyst and the uh, pyridine. All the catalysts were more difficult to reduce after pyridine ACF than after thiopin ACF, and even more difficult than after sulfidation. And this is just the work that I did on TPR. Uh, it's very difficult to characterize as sulfidic catalyst for the ACF or ACM reaction. Therefore, we're looking to uh, characterize by XPS after we run the TPD experiment, trying to clean the surface to look to the metallic phase on the catalyst. I think that is all that I have to say today.